Hey everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL. On Thank you, coach. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Miami Dolphins. The return man, Chris Moore. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Number one for Kenneth Dixon. Fights off the defender. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times. And they operate as a terrific unit. Second down, it's Dixon. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. And let's run through the Dolphins' defense. When Kiko Alonso first made it to the NFL, all I could think about was remembering him playing in college. And there's a wildness to him. There is also a control as well. Always around the football. And when he arrived, you knew that he was there. And then he'd fool you at times, too, because he'd pick off a pass and return it for a touchdown. you say, where did all that speed come from? I thought he was a total package coming out of Oregon. And he's got Hurst, his tight end. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. They go play action here on first down. He gets away from one. And this one is incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. And it's second down. Love his pocket awareness, able to slip out of the sack. But once you take your eyes off the receivers, once your eyes come down and you see the rush, hard to get back downfield and find an open target. Fortunate, that one just wound up as an incomplete pass. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Flacco to throw again on second down. It's caught inside the 25. They'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. John Brown, 55 yards. And the Ravens have taken the early lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Justin Tucker for the extra point. Tucker with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Five plays there on that drive, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And incomplete to open things up. The intended receiver there, Kenyon Drake. And that'll bring up second down. This offense has a few playmakers. If they're going to go downfield, they often look the way of stills. 
He loves to run the deep routes, loves to get downfield and make the big catches, and he does it with flair. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On second and 10, Tannehill. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. Still going strong at age 33 in this secondary is Eric Weddle. Six interceptions tied for third in the NFL in 2017, but that's just a small part of what he does. Plays the run very well. Has great intelligence in the secondary. Make sure everyone's organized and in the right spots. And has the instincts to break a play when necessary and create a bigger one. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And it'll be fourth down. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was the down and distance and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that bringing up fourth down yeah they were sniffing out that marker didn't want to let him get close to there and now a likely three and out to start yeah i love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch it's taken to the 26. just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards and the ravens they'll take over the Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. Breaks through the contact. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And that one results in 35 yards. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive. and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You can kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him. And I think we saw that. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. John Brown with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. Still first quarter, two receiving touchdowns for him. How are they going to slow him down? I think they're thinking about altering their game plan. Whatever they came in with, now maybe you switch a better cover guy to him. Or you make sure you have more people in his general area, wherever he lines up, to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. And all he takes off with it, it's a fake. And he gets in. But no one was expecting a fake there, but they had two more onto their lead. And that's something you almost never see nowadays. When you fake it, you're at the 15-yard line on a PAT as opposed to just going for it from the two.
Diddy Gaza. When I start spitting too much drive, need some power still. Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. All right, coach, it's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Tonight we kick off the preseason with a good matchup right away between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Philadelphia Eagles. It's an old school battle in the Keystone State of Pennsylvania. The Eagles and the Steelers are underway. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. So the Steelers' offense getting set for their first drive. Their 36-year-old quarterback brings him out there. He'll be calling the shots in his 15th season now. It's Ben Roethlisberger. And when you just sit and look at the raw numbers, you actually kick back and nod in appreciation about the career Ben Roethlisberger has had. Went over 50,000 passing yards last year, eighth all time. But what he wants more than anything, one more run to the Super Bowl where he's won twice previously. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And let's take a look at the Steeler offense. A big reason this team led the league in offense, their offensive line. Monster strength. Three Pro Bowlers last year in Alejandro Villanueva, David DeCastro, and Marquise Pouncey. Kept their quarterbacks upright to throw it downfield and carved a lot of holes for their runners. Double tight, double tight. Four down, four down. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. That catch good for five. It's third down. And we peek at the defense now for Philadelphia. A pro bowler each of the last three seasons. Fletcher Cox can blow up the run like nobody this side of Aaron Donald. When I asked him how he handled double teams, he said the first thing I want to do is get the hands of the first blocker off of me. Then I'll just go ahead and deal with the second guy. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Back deep is Darren Sproles. Hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. Look who is trotting out there to take the snaps. It's the much-anticipated return of the quarterback, Carson Wentz. And what a season Carson Wentz was having in 2017 after a rookie season that was a little bit up and down, as you might expect. He was having an MVP caliber year. 33 touchdown passes at the time of his injury. Had his team at 11 and 2, riding high. Everyone thought that might be it for the Eagles. There goes their dream of winning a Super Bowl. And got his man complete. Pass the 20. A big play there on the catch and run. 76 yards. Tell the truth, partner. You didn't think he was coming down with that one, did you? Come on, tell me the truth. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'll tell you what, though. A one-handed grab of that length. Talk about giving your team a little juice. Oh, big time. I mean, everyone's going to be excited about that one, whether you're on the field or not. It permeates its way through the entire team, and I can't wait to see what they do on the next down. Now it's a giant. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It'll be a three-yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. 
And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. On second and goal, Ajayi, the lone man in the backfield. Wins to throw on second down. Got him in. Off and it's Ertz. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Zach Ertz there to make the grab. And the Eagles have taken the early lead. What a great weapon. So often, such a big mismatch. And there's no route he can't run. You name it, he's going to do it. And he's a matchup nightmare for the defense. No matter who they put on him, he's going to win the battle. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. Elliott good with a PAT, and that makes the score 7-0. Elliott now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And the Steelers set to take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Brought down by Nate Gary. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys of over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. They'll go again with Bell. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. He lost two there, and it's third down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. <laughs> On third down, Roethlisberger. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there and a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half. In some of these shorter games, a bigger runs later. This is caught by Antonio Brown. First catch for the NFL's leader in receiving yards a year ago, and a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. 
Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 7-0 is our score, and we're back to Philadelphia after this. The NFL on EA 